Hello everyone and welcome to today's ship tour of the world's largest cruise ship, Icon of the Seas. We're going to be going through deck by deck all the way from the top to the bottom of this ship. So let's go ahead and get started. All the way up on deck 17 forward, we have the coastal kitchen. Here's a look inside. Didn't quite get to go inside there though. This is two levels. The lower level down on deck 16 from what we see here is kind of the sweet lounge for it as well. Jumping one more deck down to 15, we're going to go into the Aqua Dome. This is one of the main attractions and the staples here on board Icon of the Seas. Speaking of the Coastal Kitchen, there's a quick view of the Coastal Kitchen that looks down into the Aqua Dome. But here's the center stage of it all, the Aqua Theater, similar to what we see in the, well, the Aqua Theater on the Oasis class ships. Very similar shows. Here we have the overlook. This is going to be, of course, overlooking the front of the ship. This actually steps down into deck 14. 270 degree view all the way across. You even have a bar and lots and lots of chairs. And of course, like I mentioned, a view out the front of the ship and of course out the sides as well. It's a very, very nice area and very relaxing. On the other side across from there is the rye and bean bar. It's a coffee bar pretty much. And that's right outside of the Aqua Dome Theater. Here we have Hooked, which is the specialty seafood restaurant as well. That's to the port side or the left-hand side of the ship. And then as we start making our way back out of the Aqua Dome Theater here, we have the Royal Bling. We're going to make our way back on deck 15 just a little bit here to the Aqua Dome Marketplace. This is a buffet-style place to eat. You can find Mediterranean food and even Chinese food and as well as mac and cheese, which is really awesome. This was actually one of my favorites here on board Icon of the Seas. And it's a little bit of a hidden gem just because of how small and out of the way it is. It's just kind of tucked away at the very top and front, almost to the side of the Aqua Dome. So definitely check it out. Now we're going to finally jump outside and back up to deck 17 to one of the main pool decks here on Icon of the Seas. And of course, as you can see, I'm putting the deck numbers and where on the ship just to kind of give you an idea as the top deck can be pretty complicated. But here off to the one side, we do have a, one of the main pools. This is an infinity pool with a bar located right across from it. And what I mean by complicated is that it goes up on one side, but there's no other side of it and vice versa for decks 15, 16, and 17. So just kind of keep that in mind. But again, I'll leave the deck numbers there for you. Continuing back midship, we have one of the little martini glass style hot tubs. And then all the way towards the back of deck 17, we have where it kind of dead ends at Thrill Island down on deck 16, which is where we're off to next. Thrill Island is, of course, home to the massive water park, and I mean massive water park here on Icon of the Seas. The Category 6 water park, which, of course, consists of six, ironic, water slides. You have two raft slides. You have the yellow one that's kind of a, not necessarily a freefall water slide, but one that has a very steep drop to it. And then we have the green and pink water slides, which can holds two to four people on rafts. These are raft water slides. And then there are two others in this big tower here that are mat slides. They are basically racers where you lay down on your stomach and you race down against each other. And then you have this one here in the middle that is a free fall water slide. And all the way in the back on deck 16, we have the Flow Rider, a Royal Caribbean favorite that made its big debut on a previous world's largest cruise ship, Freedom of the Seas, back in 2007. Here we have a look down onto the infinity pool in the hideaway area here on Icon of the Seas. This is a 18 plus. Pretty much as soon as you head down those sets of stairs, it is 18 and older. So no kids back here, which is always a great plus. This is a very, very nice area here on board the ship with that beautiful pool. And of course, we have the hideaway bar as well. To skip back up, we're going to be over in the mini golf course here on Icon of the Seas. This is basically... Almost like a shipwreck theme, which is really neat to go along with the Category 6 water slides. And right next to that, we have up the set of stairs, we have a elevated basketball court, which is really neat. And underneath that basketball court, I didn't notice any noise issues over there. But there is a bar. And of course, base camp is this restaurant here that is a buffet style where part of it is free and part of it is paid to eat. 
And right in the middle here on deck 16 aft, as you start to make your way inside for the elevator banks, if you look off to your left-hand side, we have deserted milkshake bar. This is a place you have to pay for, but you can get pretty much a customized milkshake uh, where you can get any sort of toppings. You can even spike this with your favorite alcohols. Skipping forward a little bit here on 16, we have the rock climbing wall, which is, of course, continuing to come around on all these new ships, making its big debut back on the Voyager class in the early 2000s. Here we have a exclusive feature here on the Icon class ship, so Icon, Star, and the unnamed third ship, Crown's Edge. This you do have to pay for. It's pretty expensive, but if you want that thrill of going over the side of the ship, go for it. The swim and tonic bar here on Icon is actually split into two parts. This is the part where it's actually not connected to the pool or the swim up portion of it. We'll get to that in just a minute. This little slide here, you, any age can do it. Of course, you just drop from deck 16 down to 15. It's a fun time, definitely try it out. But here we have the other side of the swim and tonic bar. This is the first swim up bar at sea found on board Icon and all of her sister ships again. So deck 16 all the way forward, mid-ish, kind of in that weird in-between zone, you'll find the Swim and Tonic Bar. Directly beneath the Swim and Tonic Bar, we actually have the ping pong tables, which are enclosed this time into this little area. So not too susceptible to wind like they are on other ships, so they won't go flying off the ship, which is always a big plus. Making our way towards the back of the ship, still around midship area, we're going to find a couple other pools and hot tubs. This entire side of the ship is pretty much lined with small hot tubs and small pools. And across from these hot tubs and pools, we have the lower portion of the lime and coconut bar. Here's a look at one of the pools that I had mentioned earlier. Beforehand, it was just a hot tub. This is one of the pools. And of course, lifeguards are always on duty whenever these are open. And as we continue our way back, we get to one of my personal favorites, El Loco Fresh, the Mexican restaurant on board. And to pair up with El Loco Fresh, built right into it is Cantina Fresca, which is just a Mexican-themed bar to go along with it. Here we go, deck 15 midship, we have the Royal Bay Pool, and a fun fact about this one, it is the largest pool at sea, holding over 40,000 gallons of water, which is really crazy. And deck 15 all the way forward before we head back inside, we have another bar here off to the side, and just behind the bar, and right in the middle of the split structure of the ship, we have the Sprinkles Ice Cream Bar, where you can get yourself a little soft serve ice cream. Here we are, deck 14 forward. We have Vitality at Sea, which is the spa here on board Icon. You can get your massages, things like that. We also have the Blow Dry Bar, called To Dry For. And of course, as we spin around, we have the Vitality Cafe, where you can get yourself a fruit smoothie. And of course, deck 15 all the way aft, we have one of the most important parts of the ship, the Wind Jammer Marketplace. This is the main buffet area here on board the ship. All sorts of food. Pretty much anything you can think of, of course. And one really nice thing about this is it's very similar to the Wonder of the Seas as far as the layout how it circles around the big surfside area and you can also look out to the ocean or you can spin around and look inwards and down onto surfside it's completely your choice there and here's just a quick look down the middle up onto the water park and of course surfside down below us down on deck seven but speaking of surfside let's skip down to deck eight this is actually the upper portion of it. All it is is a shop here up on deck eight of Surfside. The main is on deck seven, but we're gonna continue through deck eight because here we have Central Park. As we begin to make our journey forward here on deck eight, we have Blues, Jazz, and Blues. This is a jazz bar here found on board in Central Park. Across from there, we have the Regalia and a few other luxury gift shops here found on board. And next to the luxury shops, we have the Champagne Bar found under this little green turquoise color awning. One neat part about Central Park here on the Icon class is that in the main promenade, you have the pearl and you actually do get to look in and see the pearl through this little window here. And you can also see the ocean on the other end of the promenade, which is really nice. You don't get that on the Oasis class. But here we have Park Cafe with your lunch sandwiches. And of course, now some outdoor seating. 
Another really cool thing is outside of the Pearl Cafe, you have a staircase that leads right up into Central Park, which you don't get on the previous generation ships. Here we have the trellis bar. And then here we have Izumi at the park. This is a little to-go window here for Izumi. And that's built right into the side of the regular Izumi hibachi grill. And then, of course, as always, we have the main steakhouse, Chops Grill, which was fantastic on this cruise. Decade all the way forward, we have the Empire Supper Club, which was one of the very high-end specialty restaurants here on board Icon. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get in to get actual footage of it, but you can find it all the way forward on Deck 8. Skipping to the back of the ship, we have Surfside down on Deck 7. This is similar to the Boardwalk area, if you're familiar with the Oasis class. And as we go through Surfside here, you'll likely notice that it is a very kid-focused and kid-friendly area. Here we have Surfside Eatery. This is a small buffet-type area. They also have Dino Nuggies, for those who like Dino Chicken Nuggets. Here we have the Carousel. And right next to the Surfside Eatery, we have Sprinkles, which is another ice cream stand. And then we have Surfside Bites. This is also included where you can get some popcorn chicken, churros, things like that. Very, very good food here. I definitely recommend it. And then here we have the Lemon Post Bar, where you can get adult drinks and kid-friendly drinks. And of course, right in the middle, the center of it all, we have Splash Away Bay, the kids' play area, kind of a pool, not necessarily a pool area, but lots of fun for kids. Anyways, here's Pier 7. This you do have to pay for. But it is, of course, a, another restaurant here found on Surfside. And it does come with some outdoor seating as well. Continuing our way back, we have Sugar Beach, the candy store here on Surfside. Next to that, we have the arcade where you can play some air hockey, claw machines, racing games, anything you can think of. That about wraps up here on Surfside. So let's go ahead and head down to deck six where we have Playmakers and Absolute Zero. Right at the bottom of that staircase as you head inside, there is a small gift shop with some higher end items, but not necessarily luxury shops that we see on Central Park. But then here we go into Playmakers, the sports bar here on board Royal Caribbean Ships. Fantastic place. Unfortunately, didn't go here on this cruise, but always one place I love to go when they have it. And in the very back on deck six, we have Absolute Zero, which is the ice skating rink here on board where you can find the ice shows. And occasionally they will have days where you can do just ice skating for the general public. Turning things around and heading back to midship here on deck six, we have the promenade. This is a upper and lower area compared to just the single level that we have on the Oasis class. But here we have the schooner bar that's found on every Royal Caribbean ship. It's a staple across the fleet. Here we have Giovanni's Italian Kitchen, the Italian restaurant, specialty restaurant here on board. And there is a bar included as well. Really cool location to have it as part of the promenade rather than Central Park that it was on previous ships. And you also get a nice ocean view. We have a look at the radiance of the seas outside the window right there. And continuing forward, we have the Dueling Pianos Bar, which is really neat. It's a first for Royal Caribbean to have a Dueling Piano Bar. Two pianists just pretty much vibing and have a great time every night. It was really, really cool. All the way... Forward, we have the Crown Lounge. Not exactly sure what this was. I'm guessing just a exclusive area for higher tier guests. But here we have the Attic, which was the comedy club on board. And as we continue our circle around Deck 6, here we have part of the Pearl Cafe, a hidden part off to the side, where you can actually have coffee on tap, which is kind of cool. And this was free. But here we have the main thing, though. Pearl Cafe, which is basically taking the place of Cafe Promenade, which is found on previous Royal Caribbean ships. And of course, the icon of the icon, the Pearl. Would you call it that? But thousands of little individual tiles moving all individually. It's incredible. And it's, if I'm not mistaken, it was the largest art sculpture in the world. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure I saw that somewhere. Here we have the Boleros Bar, though. Just another lounge relaxation area to grab a drink. And sweeping on down to deck number five midship, we have the jogging track that loops around, pretty much goes from end to end of the ship. 
And here's one of my favorite places on board the ship, the next cruise desk. I'm actually proud of myself for not even going in there once. It's a big day for me. But across from there, we have some of the merchant shops and guest services and a dog peeing on a lamp. And then we have another bar here off. It's the Irish theme bar and a clock. Fun fact about that clock. It is always reading 2 p.m. because in 24-hour time, it is 1400. Tying into the 1400 bar that we see here. 1400 is the yard number for Icon of the Seas, so it's a special tribute to the ship itself. And there is a little outdoor area on deck 5, which is really neat. This does go for both sides. There are couches and chairs out there. And here we go with another look at the Pearl. We're just at the bottom of it is pretty much what it is. But as you can see, there is a staircase leading from deck five up to deck six where the Pearl Cafe is. And just off to the side of the Pearl, we have the gift shops where you can get all of your Royal Caribbean logo merchandise, including my favorite, the ship model. Across from the Royal shops, you have the actual Starbucks on board. It's the same menu as Cafe Promenade. You just don't get your loyalty member discounts that you would get at the Pearl Cafe. So fun fact for that. Here we have the collection where it's just more of a luxury shop where you can find yourself some purses, handbags, things like that. And here we have another one of my favorites, Sorrento's Pizza. Fantastic onboard icon. Definitely recommend it. And then here we have, as we start to make our way forward again, Spotlight Karaoke, which is directly below the dueling pianos that we were at earlier. But this is basically just a karaoke bar. Deck 5 all the way forward, we have the top level of the Royal Theater. This also spans down to Deck 4 as well. This is just the upper entrance of it. And then the very front of Deck 5, we have the Fitness Center. You actually have to go out onto the jogging track to access it, as this is the only entrance that I was able to find at least. But you go into these sliding glass doors, and you're inside the gym. Back in on Deck 4, that was another entrance for the Royal Theater. And then across from there, we have the upper level of the Music Hall. The Music Hall actually spans decks three and four, so there is an entrance down below exactly where we're at right now as well. And then there's also an entrance into the casino from the Music Hall. And one of the cooler entrances for the casino here on board the Icon is right across from the Pearl, there is actually an escalator that takes you down into the Casino Royale. But deck four midship, if you like to gamble, Icon's got a very large casino for you. And last but certainly not least, we have the main dining room. This is the deck four entrance, but the main dining room spans decks three, four, and five for any time or assigned time dinners. Thank you all so much for tuning in for today's ship tour of the world's largest cruise ship, Icon of the Seas. If you want to continue following along for all of the upcoming videos that we have for this cruise, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell to be notified every time we upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.